Stock Car Racing's greatest day, the Daytona 500. The Daytona 500, the great American race. Depending on who you ask, the Daytona 500 is arguably the biggest race in America. It's the Super Bowl of stock car racing. It's that annual tradition that NASCAR season is officially back with the first race of the season. Every fan expects the Daytona 500 to be one of the best races of the season. But to start off the new millennium, that didn't happen. As a matter of fact, the 2000 Daytona 500 not only is the worst Daytona 500 of the millennium, but the worst Daytona 500 ever. The biggest stories entering the Daytona 500 was Dale Jarrett's crash and happy hour that would require repairs. The team was able to get the car ready and able to start up front on the grid. The next being Earnhardt Sr. and Jr.'s first Daytona 500 together. And lastly, could last year's defending race champion Jeff Gordon repeat as Daytona 500 champion? The fans are hyped, the drivers are hyped, the crews are hyped. Everyone is super hyped up for this main event. 2000 Speed Weeks had its intense moments during the weekend. You had Michael Waltrip's flip in the Bush race, and then in the truck race, you had Jeffrey Bodine's horrible crash. It's the final Great American Race on CBS, the race's home since 1979. All of these storylines heading into the Great American Race led to the biggest snoozer in the race's history. This is the worst Daytona 500. At the start of the race, we have our first lead change of the afternoon, with Ricky Rudd passing his teammate Dale Jarrett. Rudd would lead the first lap of the new millennium, but this would be his only lap this entire race. Mike Skinner was soon swapping the lead with him after, and he was able to get a couple laps led. Not long after, defending Winston Cup champion Dale Jarrett takes the lead on lap 5. In the first 5 laps, we have already had 3 lead changes. In the final 195 laps, there would be only one more lead change on track. Once he took the lead, he built a small pack with fellow Ford drivers Bill Elliott and Mark Martin, and the three were able to break away from the rest. Jarrett was looking for his third Daytona 500, while Bill Elliott was looking for his second, and Mark Martin, his first. Hey, there's Chase Elliott. Dale Jr. and Dale Sr. are doing everything they can to try and keep up, as they were one of the favorites heading into this race. I thought it was funny how the seven of Michael Waltrip, the eight of Dale Jr., and the three of Dale Earnhardt were running one, two, three in the 2000 Daytona 500. Not by running position, of course, but by the order of their cars. Even with the extra help, they're not the only ones who are struggling. Nobody can seem to catch up to those three Fords. Michael Waltrip's onboard camera tells the whole story. Look at the size of that gap. That is insane. Thankfully on lap 34, we get the race's first caution for oil in turns one and two, coming from Jeff Gordon's blown engine. And it's a freight train for the next 97 laps. The longest green flag run of the entire race, 97 laps, saw little passing. During this run, there was not a single lead change under green. Everybody was spread out. There was very little passing taking place. The reason Dale Earnhardt's dropping back in this clip is because he's trying to make something work, but unfortunately nobody wants to work with him. The only other passing for the lead going on is during green flag pit stops. But it doesn't matter, because once everything cycles through, we all know what happens at this point. Dale Jarrett is going to take the lead and hold on to it. Here's the racing stats up to this point. After 95 laps, we have had only 6 leaders, 7 lead changes, and 1 caution. 42 cars are still running this race. At the halfway point, we have our first surprise of the race. Mark Martin is able to get in front of Dale Jarrett after the last cycle of pit stops. Look at the poor Winston Flagman just standing there in boredom, because he has to watch this whole thing. After Joe Nemechek blew an engine on lap 134, the second caution of the race came out. Thank God. The only entertaining part up to this point has been the graphics, maybe. This was CBS Sports in 2000. At the time, these were pretty killer. Just an FYI, I actually watched the whole entire race from start to finish, and up to this point, I couldn't find anything entertaining. Nobody was passing each other. There was not any passes for the lead since the first five laps of the race. This race was a straight up snoozer. After the second caution, it didn't get any better. 
The only bright spot in this entire race was that 10 Pontiac of Johnny Benson. The team didn't even get a sponsor until the morning of race day, and here they are running inside the top 10. This has the potential to be one of the biggest upsets in Daytona 500 history. With 40 laps to go, this Cinderella story was about to take shape. Benson's team played the track position game to their advantage. Benson's able to hold on to the lead for 39 straight laps, up until the final caution. With less than 10 to go, the final caution comes comes out, the first big one of the day. Jimmy Spencer nudges just a little bit into Dale Earnhardt, and then Earnhardt turns into Michael, turning him. In the race back to the line, Benson was able to hold position for the ensuing restart. The race's saving grace could happen if he can pull this off. Restart happens, Jarrett pulls down to the inside, the pack goes with him, Jarrett takes the victory. Well, that's not exactly what happened. The final caution of the race comes out involving Jimmy Spencer, Dale Jarrett comes back across the line, and takes the yellow and checkered flags as the 2000 Daytona 500 champion. This Daytona 500 lasted three hours and 12 minutes, the average speed being 155 miles per hour, only six cautions for 24 laps, the race finishes under caution, and a grand total of only nine lead changes throughout the entire race, nine. The reaction within the sport from teams and drivers wasn't so shocking. Former crew chief Larry Mack had this to say after speed weeks. They're thinking about building more seats here. They ought to build cots, cause this stuff is going to put everyone to sleep. You think that's bad? Just listen to Dale Earnhardt. That's the worst race and I've seen at Daytona in a long, long time. They took NASCAR once to cut racing and made it some of the sorriest racing, took racing out of the drivers and the crew's hands. We can't adjust, we can't make our cars drive like we want. They just, they just killed the race at Daytona. That's all I got to say. Mr. Bill France Sr. probably roll over his grave. He's seen that deal. This race was so bad that it led to NASCAR drastically changing its entire plate package. And unfortunately, CBS goes out with a snoozer in their final Daytona 500. We wouldn't see a Daytona 500 this bad until 2013, but this is by far the worst Daytona 500 in the race's history. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.